Are you looking to up your game when it comes to vocal warm-ups? Then you're in luck, because this week we're gonna go over semi-occluded vocal tract exercises. Hi, I'm Stacey Menton from SingingMamasHomestead.com, where we provide information for singers and professional voice users about vocal wellness on a path to whole person wellness. And today's video is all about semi-occluded vocal tract exercises, frequently abbreviated SOVTEs. Semi-occluded vocal tract exercises help to warm up the voice in a couple of different ways. So first of all, they, they help realign the subsystems of voicing a bit, and they provide a pressure feedback that helps the vocal folds close easier and vibrate easier which, you know, makes the voice feel easy too, especially when you're just trying to wake the voice up for whatever you plan on doing with it. So, first of all, um, let's go through the actual science behind these. So, um, the science behind semi-occluded vocal tract exercises is we have air that comes up from our lungs through our windpipe, and our vocal folds sit right at the top of the windpipe, um, and then the air usually comes up through the vocal folds, setting them into vibration, and then air would, es would usually escape through our mouths. Um, by somewhat closing off the mouth, usually somewhere at the lips, um, some of the pressure, the air pressure that would usually come out, actually feeds back at the vocal folds, which helps them close easier and vibrate easier. And that can send messages up to the brain that we don't need extra muscles to help. So when we're trying to reduce extraneous muscle tension, um, these exercises are really good for that and they're kind of like a quick reset button. To learn more about the science behind all of this, I'd urge you to check out the paper that I'm going to link below. Um, it's by Ingo Tietze. He's kind of the reason we understand why, what the science is behind why these exercises are so beneficial for the voice. Um, and if you also are looking to learn more about vocal tract anatomy and physiology, I'll link the blog post and the YouTube videos to my description um, from my blog below. There are many different kinds of SOVTEs. Um, you can semi-occlude the vocal tract in a whole bunch of different ways. So the first one that I ever learned was a lip trill. So um, so the idea is your lips are buzzing and then you turn your voice on and that's a lip trill. One that I still cannot do is a tongue trill. Um, that's essentially like a, a Spanish rolled R. I can't achieve it, but it would essentially be making that R and turning your voice on. So uh, I, I can't do it, but that's okay. Um, another one would be to use a straw. So having a straw handy and just I'm making sure air is coming through down here. So that is straw phonation. You can also take a cup of water, put the straw in it, and to make sure air is blowing, you just want to see that the bubbles are staying nice and even. That's another option. Um, and then there's this thing called a buzzy O. Um, which is done in vocal function exercises, which is a whole nother video. Um, but essentially it's like making an ooh with your lips, blowing air and trying to turn the voice on. So does about the same thing as all of these others. Um, and then the last one that I'm going to teach you today is, um, blowfish. Blowfish I learned during a, um, I took a master course at um, the American Speech Language Hearing Association's um, convention in Orlando two years ago in 2019, back when we still had things like conventions, although they're coming back, that's exciting. Um, during that convention, I attended a master class with Wendy LeBourne, um, Marcy Rosenberg, and Star Cookman, who are all amazing, amazing women. Um, and they demonstrated this video of blowfish, which is essentially you're puffing your cheeks out and you're letting just a little air through. So, and then you want to turn your voice on with that like this. 
that is blowfish in a nutshell. And what they showed was that, first of all, you can enunciate a couple of different sounds with it. So, or, so I'm saying da 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 or da ga da ga da ga or ga 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 ga. You have a couple of different options so you can be playing around with tongue movement while you're doing this blowfish exercise, which is a semi occluded exercise. They actually showed one of them doing the exercise while being scoped through the nose so we could see there's actually a very wide throat when you're doing this exercise. It's my current favorite option for semi-occluded vocal tract exercises because you don't need a prop, you don't need a straw, you don't need to be able to do something funny with your tongue. Everybody coordinates things a little bit differently so finding out which ones work for you and which ones don't is great but don't worry if you can't do one or another. That's okay. All right, so now I'm gonna teach you using blowfish, but you could use any kind of semi-occluded task to do this. I'm gonna teach you the exercises I usually teach people who are um, speakers that want to be able to use this as kind of a reset button for their voice, maybe before or after a phone call to warm up or cool down their voice, or just you know before they go into a conference that they're running, just to kind of get their voice in good shape and kind of realign things so they can remember what that feels like as they go into their meeting. All right, so the three exercises. The first is um, you're gonna pop your cheeks out with air, let that air through, and then turn your voice on. All right, so the first exercise is to glide up and glide down like this. And then exercise two is three hills. And exercise three is just to hum a little song. Um, happy birthday, twinkle, twinkle, little star, Mary had a little lamb, something simple. So, sometimes I'll mix it up and add a little dugga dugga kind of action with the tongue. But usually for speakers, I'm just telling them to do this quick, easy exercise. It takes all of about 20 to 30 seconds to complete. And then to move on to speaking and their speaking voice will feel a little bit better, at least to begin. Um, and then I'll frequently recommend that they do it multiple times throughout the day as their little reset button. All right, now for singers, I have a couple of extra exercises that I use in my own warm-up routine and in the warm-up routine I use with some of my voice students. So I'm just going to go over those right now with you. All right, so let's start here. exercise I frequently warm everybody up with and then I might do something that kind of brings the voice down a little sometimes have people especially with a straw try some mesa di voce so they can try to 
see what happens to the um, bubbles. Make sure that the bubbles are continuing even as they're going through a messa di voce. So let's start, let's do C to C today. So. do frequently is a five five nine scale with this so we'll just do it in the key of C and then you can take it wherever you want exercises are great to get your voice in a nice healthy place um, there's science behind use of these exercises we understand we now better understand the physiology and anatomy that goes along with what's happening here and why it makes the voice feel easy and why it's such a nice easy quick warm-up before you start moving into other exercises that you want to do to warm up um, and I'll go through some of those other exercises in future videos um, but this is a quick warm up and you have lots of options of what you can do with it. You can even try to learn your music with the blowfish exercise or some kind of semi occluded exercise. So, for instance, um and then afterwards you could try singing it normally. Um, but you could learn the whole song on some semi-occluded task. And then you're learning it without a whole bunch of extra tension, ideally. And then when you go to put it all together, the muscle memory is already there for lack of tension. Down by the Sally Gardens, my love and I did meet. So it can be really helpful. And now I'm feeling warm, which is great because I've got a voice lesson to teach in a little bit. All right, it has been so much fun talking to you and teaching you about this awesome exercise or set of exercises that you can do for your voice. I'm Stacey Menton from singingmamashomestead.com and I wish you success on your wellness journey.